Hey guys, just thought I'd give an update on my indoor Mini Z track. So the masking tape where I was joining my DIY tiles onto the Kyosho version of the RCP track, um, the tiles were cheap ones, so they would sort of stretch and slip on the ground. So every now and then the cars would get caught on the tape. So I decided I'd make it more of a durable thing because it's still about three months before Kyosho and Japan will have the track back in stock for me to get another track to finish off my track. So I'll show you what I did as a fix. Alright, so what I did is I basically made it adapt onto the Kyosho side. And then I just glued on leftover bits from my Mini Q outdoor track along the sides because I want it to be durable so I don't have to keep fixing the side rails when the cars hit it. So I've been testing it today and it's working really well. No car has been able to break them yet which is good. So I've also found some really interesting things about the cars. So quite a few of my chassis that are the same wheelbase and they're all stock standard apart from changing tyres. Um, putting the same body on some of them, it doesn't have the same balance. So an example is my red Audi R8 has really, really sharp turn in, but on the same 98mm mid-mount, I put another Audi body on what is now the Enzo Ferrari, and it understeered more than the other one. And I thought, hmm, it's supposed to be the same out of the box, I'm not going to go and tinker with springs and uh, the T-plates at the back at this stage. I just looked through the specs and went, all right, the Enzo's got a relatively narrow front by, I think, a plus one from memory and a very wide rear. Let's try it and see how it goes. And the Enzo fixes the issue. So the Audi R8 body on that chassis was understeering like crazy and the Enzo on it has the crisp turn in, just like an Audi body on a different chassis. So it's like, hmm, is this um, normal with you guys? Are you finding you sort of need to set up each car differently when it's supposed to be at least the same from the factory body? Not sure. Anyway, so I've got my three McLaren F1s there and um, they're all subtly different. So I've been tweaking them with different tires to try and make them very much the same. The orange LM in the middle is the best of the three followed by the Harrods, and the trickiest one is the Ueno Clinic black one there that when I bought it actually was a Chevy Camaro which I bought because it was dirt cheap and I got a light set with it as well so I've got lights to put in another car so I'm having trouble with the 94mm all-wheel drive um, Nissan GTR R33 there it's um, just traction rolling, it turns in nicely but it just can't hang on in the corners, it rolls over so that 94mm rear mount there, that Lexus is fantastic, amazing turn in. People say the aerodynamics actually work on the car and I, I've got to say I do believe it. I'm seeing that one drives really well. So I'm thinking with my other 94mm car, which is currently a Toyota 86, what should I do? Should I make it another Lexus or shall I make it a Nissan 350Z um, 2005 version? So I used to drive that one and on the outdoor track I used to really like it so tempted that's a spare body that I bought intentionally to be a race body so I might try that. Biggest problem I'm having at the moment is the Mazda RX-7 I think the issue is the body it's um, probably nose heavy it just feels that way it makes the car understeer too much so I'm going to look for another body to put on that 90mm I think it's a rear wheel drive at the moment. Um, I've got a 90mm all-wheel drive, but I think it's in a different car. And also these two Porsches here, um, 90mm rear mount. The one on the right, the Lizard Racing one, turns in super crisply. The one on the left, the silver one, understeers. So similar issue. They're um, not the same body, but they're not far off. Uh, it's just strange the way I'm finding differences. Now, over here, the Ferrari 458 is turning in beautifully, in fact probably a bit too aggressively so um, I might be able to tweak the tyres again so it's just interesting to me how they're 
um, varying so much from chassis to chassis, not just body to body. And um, my Lexus there, it's sort of in the middle. I wish it turned a little bit, a bit more crisply, but um, I've just got to take the outside line a bit more and make sure I've got room for the turn with it. Um, compared to the 94mm rear mount, which is just so sharp on turning, I can be more, more or less anywhere on the track so long as I don't get on the power too soon, because the rear mount cars are known to understeer on the power. So, in terms of making the track durable to last a few months, um, I've just glued the rails down all the way around, so the tiles, I don't care, I've decided I'm not going to need them once the new track arrives, so uh, glued things onto them in various areas and um, used some of the leftover side rails from my Mini Q outdoor track um, which is working well for that section so over this side um, I'm going to stop the video, we've just had our groceries arrive so I've got to go and help unpack well, I'm back from unloading the supermarket groceries, so I'll show you the track. So now it's got solid side rails everywhere except at this end where I need to open the wardrobe doors occasionally so I can just fold down those flaps. And solid up the side here. And then here's the other join where I did the same thing and made made it fit into the Kyosho pieces. Creaky four. So the cars I've arranged there, apart from the Calsonic Nissan 350 on the side in a case, are all my drivable chassis. So I'm still tweaking some of them. The McLaren F1s are driving beautifully love how they drive. The black Lexus is driving really well but it's a sharp turning car so got to get used to that. And now that I've swapped over one of the Audi R8s to be the Enzo Ferrari that is just driving fantastically. So I'm still new at this Mini Z thing in terms of driving them and I've only been driving RC cars for a year. So let me know in the comments if you've got any ideas about why when you buy the same chassis that they can be quite different and even with the same bodies on them behave differently. I assume it comes down to uh, manufacturing tolerances and construction variation and possibly something as subtle as um, how tight I do up the nuts on the wheels in terms of the front ones which can help with drag brake and the rear ones in terms of um, how loose the diff is. But any time I had a car that didn't drive the way I wanted to, I played around with those and didn't actually find that it worked the way I wanted to. So then I tried tweaking tyres, you know, making a little bit less grip on the rear, trying more grip on the front, trying to get the balance right. Just wasn't working, so the easy thing was to put the right body on it. And that worked out. Alright, so I might as well drive my new Enzo Ferrari on the track, but first of course I'll have to clear the traffic off the track so I'll get on to that so here's my Enzo Ferrari so originally I had a yellow corn McLaren F1 long tail on it and um, swapped it over to an Audi just to see if it had a tighter turning circle and the Audi turned about the same as the McLaren so then I tried putting lower grip tyres on the rear and it didn't make much of a difference on that car it just didn't bite at the front end so then I swapped it over to an Enzo Ferrari and straight away it oversteered, which is good because I knew then straight away to swap the rear tyres to higher grip and now it's driving beautifully. So I always drive a little bit differently when I'm filming because the camera is in the spot where I usually stand and I'm a bit off by doing that. But anyway, we'll see how we go. So you'll see that the Enzo is turning really sharply on this very narrow track. Well, I think from memory it's something like um, uh, roughly 50 centimetres between the rails at width. Might even be less. 47 sounds right maybe, I can't remember. But um, this one's turning really well now. 
back to the over steer on the high speed 90 degree corners if I'm not careful. So I've got to lift off the throttle just slightly to avoid that. That's doing really well. So let me know if you've got any clues about why the same chassis um, straight out of the box behave so differently. I find that really intriguing. Is there variation in the tyres perhaps? Um, is it me tightening the nuts a different amount for the front and rear? Not sure. I don't know if there's much variation in the bodies because I did do a test of um, swapping the same type of body onto a car on the same chassis and it drove the same so I'm confident the bodies are close enough the same. But, um, I've got plenty of spare cars because I didn't buy them all just to have them as play cabinet. I bought quite a few to play around with on the track. So this is one of my spares. And I like how it looks and I like how it drives. It's doing really well. And the track's a simple layout but I do like the high speed. Oops, there's the first crash. And I like how you get a bit of a chance to give it full throttle down the straights. But of course, when I'm able to buy another show track like the one I've got to replace all the DIY bits, um, I'm definitely thinking of making a two-level track so a car can um, have a longer track in this small room. I'm getting a little bit of oversteer out of the high speed corners, which is alright. Just back off the throttle and it catches grip again. And occasionally it does make the car oversteer enough to sharpen the turn. I do wonder if the Enzo GT with the rear wing might actually be a little bit better by having a bit of potential downforce and a little bit extra weight on the rear tyre, but I don't have one of those. Uh, let me know if you know between the two. I'm happy with this one, just going to watch the over here. It's biting a bit now, the tyres have warmed up I guess. So I'll swap over to my trusty McLaren F1 LM, orange one, which is um, my favourite one still. So I've got my trusty orange McLaren F1 LM. And the reason I've got my Lexus SC 430 Petronas sitting there is uh, I'll drive that one next as I've put lights in it and the lights on it um, come out super super strong so eventually what I'm going to do on my track is put sort of fairy light LEDs around the track and do some night driving using the headlights which light up really well at night and also the track will be lit up on the sides to get some effect, moody effect sort of thing and also once I make the multi-level track which will be months and months away um, I'm currently leaning towards having a little bit of space to sort of put some you know, effects and things in there, you know, something just to make it look a bit more realistic or just a bit sort of more aesthetically pleasing. All right, so let's get going with the McLaren. All right, so it feels a bit different to the end though I was just driving, so it'll take me a few laps to get used to it. Yeah, you know, I might take a bit more than that. going to happen so I'll switch to the Lexus now. So we'll switch over to the Lexus and I've got the lights on full strength so many not flashing. Uh, let's see how we go. Yeah, <laughs> oh, I'll have to get used to this one too. Definitely get used to it. 
tiny dots compared to the other cars. Really off. Turn the lights off, which will cause some exposure on the track, but then I'll be lit up by Lexus lights a bit. just not really driving them that well. Okay, thanks for watching guys and remember let me give you thoughts if you've got any ideas about why the same chassis straight out of the box can be so different that um, causes understeer on some, oversteer on others and then you've got to sort of try a few bodies until you find one that's sort of a sweet spot for it. Remember they're just unmodified, just tyre changes, that's it. Okay, thanks.